Hello, I'm Joseph. So I made a previous video on this. This was Kotlin or Compose Multiplatform. I went ahead and implemented a login with Amazon. And I want to walk you through some of the stuff I did here. But this was much bigger than what I was expecting to take a bite of. This was having me to jump into some of the much deeper parts of the interop between the different platforms than what I was comfortable attempting to do. I'm grateful now because I know more about this, but it would it is it's extremely rough. And I, I'm not gonna even say like it has nothing to do with iOS being alpha at all, because I don't think it even getting beyond alpha beta and fully released that everything I've been running into is of that. Well, with one minor exception. But I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a couple things of was doing so first let me go ahead and hit play on here so i'm gonna let this build as this is building um one thing i had to do for testing some of the ui and preview by the way i said preview only worked on mac os previously that's not true their documentation states that but i was able to get it to work on linux just fine and so i can preview uh i can preview what the device code version of login with amazon so you can like type in the code into a url to log in i can preview what the button looks like when it's pressed and not pressed um the preview doesn't work when there is any type of animation so there is an animation circle here that i cannot get to load properly it's this specific composable um will not allow the preview to render at all. I don't know why. But basically, I already know how it looks, so it's generally fine. So yeah, this is the this is it running on my phone, so a native iOS application. I can tap it. I've already done my login, so it's just I gotta do some more code to kind of like revert that and let them log in again. Um, but yeah, everything else that I was programmed on Android and desktop is working fine it's not showing the keyboard i'm not sure why it's not showing the keyboard in this in the um mirror screen thing but it is there and so you can kind of see the all the stuff i was working on oh now i want you to show the keyboard the next done works the keyboard goes away to type of thing i got to implement like a tap on the back of the screen to make it go away for ios because that's usually the norm for this type of stuff but it's generally okay so i've been happy with that uh, I didn't have to really, I, didn't, I literally didn't change any code at all. All the code that I wrote for Android and for desktop, exactly the same as it has been for iOS. So really cool for that. Where a um, couple of problems I ran into is having to do with uh, the desktop version. Because I had to implement a way to pull Amazon's backend service to listen for when they actually type in the code and log in. Um, I had to deal with coroutines and then I have like a little while when or while loop basically I don't want right here while loop up here to go and pull it that ch chucked me into adding in a couple of libraries for um the sort of um ktar at ktor which is like a http wrapper around like http okay and other jvm http libraries coroutines which i was for the jvm serialization for json serialization and adding it as a plugin adding it as uh, some libraries then going into the uh uh the the build gradle system adding it for each of the different platforms of the different implementations that it has going into and adding the plugin as well for it like it's like the amount of different places i've had to jump through just to get what i think is everyone's going to be doing anyways like you're going to need to do http calls you're going to need to do serialization for json and stuff like that uh it's fairly standard for your app if you're going to want to do any type of like background task to not block your ui while you're maybe trying to do a polling type of thing coroutines are going to be mandatory so these are all things that you have to do but it's just a lot of different places i had to jump through I had to get it to work. It was fine. It, it wasn't difficult at all. Just a little bit of a tedious thing to go through all these different things. Then iOS came into play. And one thing 
I was kind of tossed into the loop for was I saw this. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's a, I have to go to Xcode. I have to include the login with Amazon dot framework. SDK that Amazon provides because nothing in multi-platform compose or compose for compose multi-platform gives you any type of like um, easy way to include a framework. Uh, you have to do that manually by yourself. That's me going into Xcode, adding the framework, adding the um, header search path, adding the API key into my plist file, that type of stuff. So I did all that and um, I was like, well, how do I get access to my framework now? It, I saw this like a UI, UI kit. Do I type in like platform? No, 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 no. There is a whole C interop thing that you need to follow. So you have to create a definition file and this will give you, uh, or this, you have to put in all the stuff that you need for this definition file. I'm not going to go into this. I'm doing a full write up by the way on this. And, um, so you, you do that and it should give you your interop options. So then you can go in and you can then import a framework. And then you can access the actual things that you want to here. Um, that's not what happened for me. <laughs> what happened for me is that first of all, fleet kept crashing left, right, and center. Anytime I tried to interact with any of this object to see stuff, it just, it took very, very long to provide me any type of context feedback. And, um, until I opened up Android studio, it was not even giving me anything, um, like everything had red, red squigglies underneath it. Like nothing was valid code ever that I was writing. Uh, I, I'm not sure why. And when I opened up Android Studio, it started to work just fine. I, I, again, I'm not sure why because this is iOS stuff I'm working with. So that was one thing. Crashing is another. Setting the definition is nothing. But I was getting these errors of like NS integer. And, and I couldn't figure out why. And I, I spent some more time Googling after like five or six hours because I was also in the process of just manually doing the C interrupt by hand, which is not pleasantly fun at all. You're looking at a conversion table, trying to figure out how it works between objective C, like uh, what's an interface or a protocol in, uh, and vice versa, how to, how to end of dictionary work, that type of stuff. Basically what happened is that, um, there is a bug that was filed that is of the same era I was running into this NS integer stuff and it was fixed 21 days ago. So, uh, what I had to do was go back into my versions and increment the Kotlin language from 1.9.22 to 0.23 and the plugin, because the plugin also need to be updated to represent the new version of Kotlin to work with it. Uh, um, very frustrating nonetheless because i've just spent a lot of time it's worthwhile to learn how to do manual bindings anyways but still and then after i did all that I finally started to get some progress um the only gotcha i ran into at that point was i wasn't quite sure how to set up certain things like a callback handle or like what exactly is needed and there's some things that don't always get translated 100 percent. so you can see how the um, interactive strategy is one you uh, there's no enum conversion. So you can write your own enum. So for example, I wrote an enum up here to do the conversion because this is what it is like an objective C where there's actually, it isn't just the number. There's actual like things here for, for the strategies. So if I go back here, um, and I go to copy this and go back, I can now get an auto complete on like always and then value and then that's the value uh, let me let me make this bigger over here but you kind of see that i can do that or i can just type in one you so there's no point for me to do all these enums i, I don't even need this for right now and there's that and then i didn't know how to do the handler because i wasn't quite sure what all this was supposed to be in here i, I didn't know the exact conversion in the objective c code and i do have to look at the objective c code so while i can get all the help in the world from the editor on some stuff here so for example if i go to the handler i gotta wait for the searching for context actions so i gotta sit here so it was taking like 30 seconds at times uh to get this context handler to show i'm not sure why now it's taking more time than before 
there we go. And then I can go to all fixes. And then I did like abstract uh, properly handler. And that gave me this here, which th is the type that I'm like, oh, okay, I can work with this now. Now I, know, now I know what to do for that. So that was the only little gotcha there. Got the handler. And then after that, you know, you're getting like NS error and type of that type of stuff. But this is more usable. Um, I'm okay with working with this. This is more along the lines of like when I'm working on the Android side or the, desk, the JVM side type of stuff. And it has been fine afterwards. So a bit, a very bit of a rough area. I was doing other stuff. Like I had a bridging header I was trying to set up. Um, I had like a little main, um, test main thing I was trying to do as well to see if the conversion, or I can fix it in some different, some way to see if it was going to work. But my, my test file was working fine too for the conversion. So I, I was just going like all over the place trying to figure out what the hell is even going on. And it's nice that it's finally done that I do have this, you know, uh, as a fully like working sample, uh, for the actual thing, there is a lot of, of code involved and this is without iOS by the way, but you kind of see the different versions there, one for desktop, one for Android. And again, I'll have this write up fully. If you want to dive into adding your own like native type of thing for this thing, but geez man this is a it's it's a <laughs> it's not that great and by the way like if you if you like uh do flutter log in uh, with amazon uh somebody made a plugin so if you if you just use flutter it's you don't have to go through all this which is sad and it says 15 months ago um they it's probably a little bit older. You got to maybe do some updates for, for them, like main SDKs, but they don't like Amazon doesn't up, hasn't updated this package, uh, for since like May or June of last year. So there's not been a lot of changes to be honest of that. So yeah, use Flutter probably don't make yourself go through this. 